build is a process to translate your code to the form a machine executes. It is the essential step before debugging or running the code. Hello, and welcome to Code with Sar. I'm Sar. How are you doing? Today, we're going to talk about how to build a .NET Core application. We're going to build different configurations, like the debug and the release. And then we're going to customize the log levels so that we can see more or less details for the build. We're going to do it using CLI, VS Code, and the Visual Studio. I recommend you to follow the instructions to do it by yourself as well, so that you can have the experience of yourself. Without further ado, let's get started. Let me start by showing you my .NET SDK environment. I have two SDKs installed, 3.1.48 and 5.0.202, and the default one is 5.0.202. Now let's create a project for build. I'll use .NET new to list all the available templates. For the simplicity, I'll pick console application. The next command that I'm going to use is .NET new console. I'll name it hello my first application and the output folder to be the current folder. As you can see, there are two files created by the template, a csproj file and a cs file. We'll take a deep look into those a little bit later. For now, let's do our first build task using .NET build. OK, hello, my first application is built to blah, 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 this folder, this dealer. Though. Let's pay attention to the path a little bit, like uh, well, after Bing, we have debug, we have net 5.0, then hello my first application dot In a while, we'll see where do they come from. And that's it. Hey, we just built our very first application together. Let's take a quick peek to see how this application runs by running .NET run. And the application runs and outputs hello world. This csproj file includes the project settings. Things like what is the output type for this project? and what is the target framework. Program.cs contains c -sharp code. There is usually a convention to align the class name with the file name, or the other way around. So you would expect to have a program class inside a file named program.cs. You could have multiple c -sharp files under this folder. They all will be compiled equally. Nothing is special about this program.cs, except there's a method named main, which is a static method. And by convention, that is the beginning point of the whole program. So if you've got a new project that you don't know where to start to looking, find out where the main method is and start from there. For any c -sharp project, it is a requirement to have the main method. I'll show you how the compile fails if the main doesn't exist next. Here, let me change the name of program.cs to program.back. Since by default, only that c -sharp file will be compiled the compiler will not recognize the program.back. So if I have compile now, it is going to complain. The program does not contain a static main method suitable for the entry point. And once I change the file name back, it will compile again. In compiled language world, there are two types or two configurations of builds, a debug build or a release build. So do c -sharp projects. Debug builds are those builds without optimization while release builds are binaries, that the compiler will do everything, anything to optimize it. The optimization will make the code running faster. It also changes the shape of the binaries, and mapping it back to source would not be as easy. Because of that, we usually build a project with the debug to begin with, but when the time it is ready to release, we're going to change it to release mode. We build the binary in debug configuration already because it is the default value. Now I'm going to show you how to build it in release mode. So if we run .NET build dash h, it will bring up the help for the build command. Pay attention to this configuration switch. That is a switch to decide whether we're going to build a debug version or a release version. On the side, this dash h is very useful if you cannot remember exactly what command that you want to use or what options that you want to use with some commands. Next, I want to show you a trick as of how to output different levels of details for the build logs. It might seem useless at this moment, but you will know when you need it. And that switch is this dash V for verbosity. There are five levels supported, required, minimal, normal, detailed, and diagnostics. 
Let's pick one and give it a shot. Then let's try choir it. Again, you might not need these uh, in most of the days, but sometimes devil's in the details. And when the time you need it, we're quite far from this point. Now let's see how can we do these build tasks in VS Code. To simulate a clean environment, I just downloaded this VS Code portable. It is like it's brand new, so that I can walk through all the steps with you together. The first step is to open the folder. If you have used the Visual Studio, you might notice this is slightly different. There, you always open a project or open a solution. In VS Code, though, concepts like a project or solution are not first-class citizen. Folder is. So we start with opening the folder. Here, once I click on the csproj file, a prompt came up. It asks, do you want to install the recommended extension for hello my first application.csproj? I can say yes to install here, but if I want to check ahead, like what is the extension exactly, I can click this show recommendations button as well. And as you can see, it is the Microsoft.NET Tools.C Sharp that is recommended as a plugin. This is again, VS Code works uh, a large numbers of uh, different languages, and C Sharp projects or .NET project is uh, not the only supported type of projects. Every type of project is supported equally by a plugin or multiple plugins. At the very beginning, you might feel like this is complex, but actually it is easier than it looked like. And once it's set up, you don't have to worry about it every time. And over time, you might find this actually convenient and powerful. Once I have this C Sharp plugin installed, when I come back to this C Sharp file, it is again prompt me that the required assets to build and debug are missing from build this project add them. I'm going to click yes, but please pay attention to the left upper corner in the explorer you'll see a new folder named .vs code. There are two files generated inside the .vs code folder, launch.json and tasks.json. Let's set aside that a little bit. Now I'm going to introduce for this video, the most important key combinations. It involves three keys that all press down together and it's a control shift B and B stands for build. Once you press that, you'll see this build command in the command palette. And if I click it, the build of the project will happen. And by the way, we can start a debugging session as well by using the debug panel here. You can stop here if you only want to build the project and mess around it. However, I suggest you to stay with me a little bit longer because next, I'm going to show you how these tasks get wired up. It will be very useful for you to customize your build process. And believe me, if you stick with the C Sharp in .NET, someday you're going to need it. Still remember these two files generated when we say yes to add those assets to build this project? These two files are actually the keys to the building debugging. Let's take a look at the task first. To begin with, there is a task labeled build. And that is the text that is shown when you press down the combinations Control shift b If I change the label to build my app, the command there in the palette will be changed accordingly. Oh no, it disappeared. The reason is, uh, once the label is changed from build to something else, the plugin doesn't know it is a build task anymore. So we're going to add a group property to this task. And then it shows up again. Okay, now let's take a look at what is inside this task. On the top, there's a command to run. And if you pay attention to the beginning of this tutorial, you know the command that we want to run is .NET build, in which .NET is a command and build is an argument. Here in this task, it is also specify which csproj file to build against, as well as some other properties and the parameters. These are MS build properties and uh, MS build could be a topic by itself, so I'm not going to go too deep here. And the proper matcher on line 15 
specifies MS compile, which will highlight the build warnings and errors when we build the project. Now, a little while ago, we built the project under the release configuration in addition to a debug build. If you can guess out how are we going to do it here, congratulations, you connected the dots. As you can see, it becomes a release build. And the advantage for this task system is so that you can put in down multiple tasks for different configurations. And you get the idea there. Now, for those other tasks, they are still tasks, but they don't show up if you press Ctrl Shift B. The general way to run it is just to use the F1 key on your keyboard to bring up the command palette and type in and then choose run task. Now you can see all the tasks defined in the tasks.json. For example, we can run watch here. What will it do is it will spin up a watch on the file system. And whenever there is a file change, it will go ahead and recompile the application and run it again. For example, if I change the string here from hello world to hello C sharp world, pay attention to the terminal and it automatically recompile the app and run it again. Same thing if we try to change the log output level for the build. Since we already know the switch of dash V and those five levels that is supported, it becomes an EDPD task to change the log level. Now build debug is going to output detailed build logs. One more thing that I want to mention is other than these uh, commands and arguments to config, there are other options for a task. These are very general options. I'll show you one example for the revealing of the terminal. This was interesting because I always get the habit to see what is output when I start a build. But for whatever reason, for a while, the default value for the revealing the window was set to either silent or never. I cannot remember which one is which. And I'll show you how it looks like. If I have the terminal open, there is no difference. But if I close it and do the build again, you'll notice the terminal window will not show up automatically. So for that period of time, to set the reveal back to always is almost the first thing that I'm going to do for every project that I touched. And I bet a lot of programmers have the same habit as I do because the default value since had been changed back to always. Okay, coming back to the tasks. Actually, tasks is a very general concept in VS Code. And once you master it, you can use it for other purposes as well. And of course, you can apply it to other types of project. We can talk more about it when there's a chance. Now let's take a look at the launch file. On the side, one big reason that I like VS Code is uh, if I learn something just like the tasks, I can then migrate the knowledge to something similar. And the launch file and the tasks is an example. You edit a JSON file and the changes got revealed on the UI and then you make use of it. For example, you see this name of .NET called launch premises console. It is used here in the debugger panel. Isn't it similar to those labels in the tasks.json? Now let's go all over other options. Um, type for core COR, this is coming down from the template, requests to launch the application, and oh, this pre-launch task is interesting. You know it is a good idea to build the project before start debugging so that you are always debugging the latest code. And this pre-launch task can help do that. You just put the name down for one of the tasks in the tasks.json. And it won't work here because we have changed the label from build to something else. Now I'll go ahead and copy the new name for the build task. This will work. Then the program needs to put pointing to the build output. And there are other arguments and the current work, work folder and so on and so forth. Once the setup is done, uh, we are ready to debugging. Let's uh, set a breakpoint and give it a shot.
Okay, now let's take a look at how we're going to do that in Visual Studio. This will be the simplest and the fastest demo. To build a debug or release, you can use this drop down to set it. And hey, Ctrl Shift B still works here. And once you press it, you see the build happens. The, there's a status indicator on the left down corner here. And if you want to see the build progress, we can bring it up in the output window. Question is uh, where? Oh, here it is. Now we can see it is the release output, which matches the configuration that we have here. And if we want to change the lock level, just like what we did with the COI and, in, and we did in the VS Code, Tools options the place to go. And we can use this button to start a debugging session. Of course, you can use the shortcut key of F5 as well. Actually, let me set a breakpoint first. And the prompt says, uh, you are debugging a release build. Oh, this is a prompt that Visual Studio gives uh, when we try to debug in the release build. It is not that it's not doable, it's just that the experience is going to be degraded. Let me change it. And there we go. Whoa, quite a journey, huh? I hope you still remember what a build is. It is a process to translate the code from the code we write to the code that the machine executes. Today, we went through the basics to build a c -sharp project. We built both the debug version and the release version. We also customized the build process a little bit so that it shows different levels of locks. We did it through CLI, and we did it again inside VS Code, and then we did it inside Visual Studio. If you've never done this before, I suggest you to try and play around it by yourself. Already. Thanks for your watching. If you enjoyed this video, press the like button to give me some motivation to keep up. Subscribe if you like the topic so that you don't miss new ones. Leave a comment below if you have questions or anything like that. Keep coding, keep improving. And I'll see you in the next video. Until then, take care.